let's go. Today, I want to talk about controllers and how I kind of structure my controllers because I've changed over the years and it gets really interesting when you have a lot of functions inside of your controller. So I want to show this to you and kind of break it down real quick. Let us jump into our picture in picture. So this is a real application that I have. It's got, uh, this is kind of one section of it. You can see it's got a lot of controllers in here. This is not a uh, insubstantial project size. There's more coming too. So this is not really the end. And this is only one of several files where I actually have controllers kept. So this is like the way I'm breaking it down. So that way it's kind of just like manageable. Um, so this is the section I want to take a look at in particular. Well, first let's, let's actually go look at the, um, let's go look at these controllers. I think that'll be fine to take a look at for a moment. So this is a standard way that you would handle your controllers, right? We have this uh, page controller and then we have everything kind of structured inside of here. So we have, you know, what are your index, create, yada, 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 and then all of your other functions that you may or may not have. Um, this is okay when you don't have a ton of stuff in here, like this folder or this file really doesn't have that much stuff, right? There's, there's like a create, there's a store. Um, I would say since there's not much in here, there's really no reason to do anything extra and special. Like I love invocable controller, like the invocable functions. They're really nice and they're really good. But once you start having just like, I don't know, I have a problem when like even this size stuff, if this is it, that's, that's kind of like, okay. Um, but I mean, look at something like the size of this, fu this function right here. Like, why am I creating an entire file just to do what is essentially a get and, a you know, <laughs> like there's, there's nothing going on here. There's really not a whole lot. So why would I do that? Um, but then there's other files where you have a lot more going on in your controllers. And even when it's really just doing some very simple, like I'm going to get some stuff from over here and pull it in and you don't do any, like I don't do work in my controllers. The way I've always treated controllers is the same, which is the controllers are kind of this intermediary that pushes data out to do something on your server side stuff. Like it's just like this, that's like, it's like this place that just kind of it's, it's a traffic cop. That's the way I think of it. It's kind of just like directing traffic where it needs to go. So you can see here, really all I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting something from this template repository. It doesn't even matter what that is in this case. I'm, you know, um, yeah, I get that stuff here and then I'm just sending it off to the view and that's it. Nothing else going on on this file. Uh, over here, I'm doing something else where I'm just like handling some data that needs to be created. So this is a store thing. So this is like just looping through some data and then redirecting me. That's it. There's not a lot going on here. And even in this case, there can be times when files get just unwieldy and they get really big. So like, imagine if I did have all of these other functions in here that were completed or needed to be completed, that would start to be a lot of lines. Even right now, I start to get like antsy once I start getting above 50, 60 lines of of code inside of a controller because it just starts to be a little bit more difficult to read and find things. So this, again, I think this file is probably fine, but there are, but it's starting to get to that point where it's like, Oh boy, I'm going to need to do some more. I may have to like kind of break this apart a little bit because it's a little bit, it's starting to get too much. Now I want to show you how I break that, 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 that down. So let's take a look at, our my members section so we can see that here first in the workspace so you see what i the way i kind of do this here is just you know you have your i have my pages stuff and then i'm just calling the controller class and then giving it the function method name that it needs pretty standard laravel stuff um posts doing the same thing notifications everything else is kind of doing that exact same thing because there's not a ton going on in there yet but there's i gotta start a few of these things need to be refactored so here's this first attempt at this refactoring that I've done here in my members section. So you can see there's a lot more uh, routes here because we're doing more than just creating members. We're starting to do things um, where I need to like, you know, edit passwords and you can only, and only certain people can edit them, you know, who can upload their avatar image, who cannot, you know, what happens if you delete the image? There's all sorts of things that need to go on. There's ways also of like somebody uploading an entire list of people to the members section. And then that gets like, has to be processed as like a bulk action. So there's lots of stuff going on in here. Um, and again, more to come. So I know that right now this section is small, but it's going to be bigger. 
So what do I need? To, so how do I fix this? How do I address when this becomes this controller starts to become unwieldy? I use both actually invocable controllers and um, multiple and just kind of these just different classes. So let me let me show you how I do this. Remember, you don't need to have one function, one file for your controllers. You can have as many as you want, and you can have multiple, you can have these invocable controllers mixed in with not with kind of a classic feel. So take a look right here. I have this line that is doing my invocable thing. I don't need to do it this way if I don't want to, but you can see how I'm doing that. I have this thing called class index. I have this member create class that has both create and store. I have a member edit, which you can see has multiple things and have edit, edit password, update, and update password. Then I have this upload one that has this upload list and upload things. So this, so I kind of started to break these things down into multiple files that I'm considering to be kind of logical groupings. So if I go back over to, let's actually go look at the member edit real quick. So this is just a, you know, immediately invocable controller. There's nothing super special here. There's, there's, there's just kind of just this one little thing. Again, there's, there's not a lot here, but because I wanted to kind of start breaking this file up, I was then, I then became like, okay, it becomes like, okay, well, fine. I'm going to start breaking these files up. I want them to be kind of logical. So I'm okay with having small, really small, almost silly little invocables lying around because I have other reasons for doing this now. So, all right, you can see it's just, it's, it's a, you know, standard controller, nothing going on here, really too funny other than I'm, gra I'm grabbing some data and I'm showing that data, nothing special. Um, when we go and we look at the member create, this is what I mean by logical groupings. So when you have a create function somewhere, that's kind of just doing the view of stuff. So if you think in terms of RESTful, APIs, you have uh, create and store, like those two things go hand in hand all the time. So you either you're going to create something and that's like the view for doing the creation. And then the store method is the one that actually does the processing. So that's how I have this broken down here. I have a create, which again, it's a one liner. This is silly to have its own invocable for, but it doesn't feel too bad when you have it logically grouped with a store method right here. So this is doing both of those things together. So now I know when I need to create something, I go here to do it. Destroy is another one that I'm just doing this standard kind of invocable thing. All right, so now let's take a look at the member edit section. So again, logical groupings that I try to do here. I have this edit function, which again, it's one liner, just dis just displays the edit page uh, and it you know grabs the data from the repository. So it gets the correct member, shows them on the screen. That's it, nothing major. The update that goes hand in hand with that is right here. So this will be if you need to update that that one. I then have this other section called edit password. So basically the way the, the screen would look just to kind of make sure to give you some sense of what's going on here is that there's, you know, you have a, a member update section where a user update, you would go to that page. And then if you wanna edit your password or change your password, you gotta click another link. So there's a link in there that says change, you know, edit your my edit my password. You click that link and it takes you to uh, the page to do the edit. Um, and I have some logic in here that basically just says, Hey, by the way, if you are, if the authorized user, that's the person who's logged in and the member ID don't match, then we kick you out right away. So you should never see this cause I should actually already be blocking this on the front end screen. But if somehow you were to just try to go to this page, if your ID doesn't match the member ID, that's that you're trying to go to. Meaning if you're one user, if you're user a, and you're trying to edit user B's password, which would have two different IDs, I kick you out. So I don't let you do that. So, you know, little logic right there. So they don't even see the screen. Uh, and then I just show the view for the person. So basically when it's your, when you are trying to edit your username and password and you're already logged into the system, this just shows that right there. And then I have the update that handles all that. Again, if for some reason I keep this logic in here because I'm always like, I'm always paranoid that somebody is able to do something random that they that they shouldn't be able to do. So I try to just keep my paranoia in like, you know, in like these little files where I'm like, hey, again, you should never have gotten to the, you can't even see this link. But if you somehow got to the edit page, I should have kicked you out there. If somehow I you were able to try to do the update and do the, the post to the user or the or the put or uh, whatever this is. Um, I'm going to try to kick you out again. So that way you don't do that. So I have these multiple things in these places where I do that, or 
I just handle the request. So that's kind of how I'm starting to do a lot of work with these controllers now. I, I like the logical grouping. I think it's starting to work really well because, you know, when the file gets really big, um, it's just a nice way of kind of just slimming things down and keeping them uh, working better. You can even see I have it in my member selected. Again, there's not a whole lot going on here, so it starts to be, it's just a nice little small area to kind of do do things. Um, and my member controller, because everything now just does extend. So the way I work it now is that it just everything extends this base controller, this member controller. So each section would have, if I go this route for everything, um, everything kind of just would extend its own controller. So in this case, it extends a member controller. And, you know, you can kind of put whatever you need across the board in there if you want to. But for my member controller, I don't have a whole lot going on. I just pull in the member repository and this is just a path that everybody needs. So that just shows you where all my view files are. So basically view as in V-I-E-W, not V-U-E. Uh, but yeah, so this is my view path. So all the file, everything that has a has a front face to it is gonna have a something that's in this directory. So I can kind of just share my information with these guys. Uh, and they all just extend from the main controller. Uh, and that's it. So I, again, like I said, I'm thinking this method is really working really well so far. I have nice ways of kind of just keeping everything logically grouped. So I'm not creating an inordinate number of files. Um, and I'm not um, just trying to like stuff one file full of crap. Everything kind of makes, log again, logical sense. The one thing that's a little weird, and again, this isn't a huge problem for me. I don't care about it too much, but it can be a little like if you're if you enjoy like I like to kind of visually separate all of these things out. Right. So I have this nice like line right here where you see everything kind of just going down the page. The one thing that might be slightly annoying. Is that when you have a uh, something like this, which is using an invocable, you can't have the array syntax, obviously. Um, with just calling this because you need to you would need to put a path name in there you need to tell what the function is called that you're going to do so if you want to just use the immediately invocable and not you can just say member class but then you don't have the brackets around it so um i don't really care too much it's just this little breakup right here that might be slightly jarring to some people like i know some people are like kind of crazy about this stuff where all of a sudden they look at it and they're like hey uh why is this not surrounded by brackets it should be the same thing it should be an array also so that's what I did here just because I was curious. I was like, I think you could do this with no, I don't think Laravel is going to care. And it turns out it doesn't. If this is something that's kind of a deal breaker for you and you're like, no, everything has to have brackets. I can't not have brackets uh, around my class name strings for some reason. Listen, everybody's got their thing. If that's your thing, you can totally do it this way where you actually just say member index uh, in the array syntax and then just put the invoke function there. You could also just change the name and not make this an invocable function. So if you really wanted to, uh, if you, you know, you can go into, let's go into member index real quick. There's nothing saying now that be, if you don't want to, you don't have to have this. You could just call this index. And there you go. Now it's, now it'll totally still work the same way. The only thing you have to do now is just change this to index. So if you don't want, like, you don't have to use the invocable functions uh, at all. There's nothing saying you need to do that. So if you don't want to, you can just get rid of it. And now what do you do for, you'd say, well, what do you do for this? Well, you just call it whatever you want to call it at that point. It doesn't matter. You can just call it the same name. You can call it member selected or just selected or whatever. The, the naming is, the naming is silly. So if whatever you want to do for that, you can kind of do. Uh, let me change this back. I do like when it's just the single function here to kind of just make it invocable and, and call it a day. Um, what else do we have to do in here? I think if there's anything else, nothing else is really, you know, this works really well. Everything in here is kind of good. Um, I'm trying to think if I was having any other issues with this that I would want to discuss or talk about. No, so far, so good. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm happy with this and the way it's working again so far. Oh, just a naming convention that I follow for this. So if it's a file that happens to have a view Again, V-I-E-W, so there's a view thing and a um, post thing, we'll call it, right? So in the case of create, like there's a create function and there's a store function. I name it after kind of the getter, I guess is the way I was thinking about it. I don't know why I do it that way, 
but that's just the way I do it. The way I kind of picked was it's, you know, member create and the member create has create and store in it. So that's just the way I've been kind of working with this. So again, member edit, you know, edit is the, the getting of the view file for like the, mem the, to edit a member. And then that will also have, you know, update in it, but I'm not calling it member. I'm not calling the class member update. I'm calling it member edit. So whatever the, the, the get, view is for that thing. Uh, that's what I name it. So if you were to go up to post controller right here, right? So let's just say we were going to name that, rename this and, and do that same methodology here. This would become uh, post create, and that would call the create method. And then this one, which is the store method, it would be post create. So they all go in the create group. Um, and then again, the edit ones, this would be post edit. And this is the, you know, this is its grouping equal. I would call it post edit also, and just keep the function named as update. So that might part, that part might just be a little bit confusing to kind of understand why I did it that way. It's just a convention I'm following, which is like whatever, basically the, the viewing file is for all the editing that you're doing or updating or creating or storing. That's the name of the class that I'm giving it. You could use a completely different naming convention if you want. There's nothing, it's just my convention. It, but it, to me, it kind of makes sense. I don't know why, but it just totally kind of made sense to me to do it that way. So that's it. Let me know what you think about the this uh, these ideas in the comments. I'd love to hear, you know, if somebody, if somebody was doing this ever before and they're like, Oh God, don't do this. You're going to, you're going to blow it up. And let me explain to you why, like if there's some sort of pitfall that I'm really not seeing here, uh, I'd love to hear about it because right now it's looking pretty good. And again, it's just, I'm kind of just considering it logical groupings for my controllers or my controller methods or functions, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here soon.